I'm Shahab Kamal. I'm from Bitwise. Uh, and I have with me William Ma. Uh, he's from Capital One. We're going to talk about uh, Hydrograph. Hydrograph is an ETL solution available on Hadoop. And we are planning to open source this in the near future. Uh, today we'll talk about the in, in the next segments about the quick architecture of Hydrograph, how it works on Hadoop, how it takes the workloads, how it pushes it down to Hadoop, and also about uh, we'll give try to squeeze in a quick demo of Hydrograph and what it looks and feels like. Uh, quickly about Bitwise, we are a 20-year-old data integration company based out of Chicago, offices in uh, Pune, India, and Australia, Sydney, uh, 1,200 employees. And we uh, are focused in the data space. Uh, we do data warehousing. Uh, been doing it for the last 20 years. And we have uh, recently collaborated with Capital One to actually build an ETL solution that works on Hadoop. Capital One, uh, I think I'll let uh, William talk a couple of words about Capital One. And then we'll talk about the journey that we, had, we, took, we took together to actually build this tool. Thank you, Shah. So, William Ma, um, Data Engineer, Capital One. And uh, like Shab said, we partnered together to build an ETL solution that we can use on Hadoop. And um, just a little bit about Capital One, for those of you uh, don't know us. Um, so, we, we, we are focused on uh, re-engine banking uh, to help folks manage their money. And one of the things we partner with Bitwise to do is to enable us to process large amounts of data in our Hadoop uh, infrastructure. So together we uh, decided you know, to build Hydrograph uh, as an open source project. And um, I think Shahab will take you through how we're leveraging this and sort of give us a demo of how it works. So that's the architecture of Hydrograph, how it all works. Um, when we started our journey, we were looking to move our data loads, our workloads, on top of Hadoop. Uh, this was almost three years ago. The initial thought was, to write MapReduce natively on top of Hadoop. Uh, not the best option, so we decided to create or act, uh, look for some kind of an abstraction on top of Hadoop that would, be, uh, that would automatically generate MapReduce. So at that point of time, we uh, picked the cascading framework as that abstraction layer. Uh, cascading auto-generates MapReduce, uh, Thais, and Flink. So we used that as the abstraction layer and inside cascading, we built uh, reusable components and functions that pretty much look and feel like any ETL functions. Like if you want to do a read file, sort, um, if you want to do an aggregate, reformat, all of those, those were built as reusable function inside of cascading. Uh, cascading auto-generates the MapReduce code to execute these functions. But to make it look like an ETL, you need to write a Java wrapper around cascading to call these functions in the right sequence like any ETL would do. Uh, so we wanted to move away from even writing this Java wrapper, which would be a couple of lines of uh, uh, pages of uh, Java program calling these functions in the right sequence. So what we did was we mapped every one of these functions, ETL functions we built on cascading, into an XML. So there's a corresponding tag in the XML for every, map, every function, every ETL function we built on top of cascading. And all you now had to do is write an ETA, uh, XML, which would um, write an XML in the right sequence. If you're doing a read file, sort, reformat, aggregate, and write, you'll just have these five tags with the right properties pro provided to these tags in the right sequence and submit it for execution. Now, what we also did was wrote an execution service that sits between cascading and the XML. It reads the XML and at runtime, auto-generates the Java wrapper around cascading. So the, the task of writing any Java code is now taken away from a developer. All you do is keep your business logic in an ETL format inside the XML tags and auto-generate the Java uh, wrapper around cascading, which calls the inbuilt functions in cascading in the right sequence. Cascading generates a MapReduce, executes on Hadoop. The last step in the journey was 
we built a UI on top of the XML, and we created these UI icons inside the, uh, in, inside the UI, and every time you drag and drop an icon, it auto-generates the XML tag for that particular function. So if you drag and drop a read function, it creates the XML tag for the read. You drag and drop the, uh, the sort function, it, drag, it creates the XML tag for sort, reformat, and so on and so forth. So as you string together an ETL in the UI, it auto-generates the XML when you save the ETL uh, in the UI, and when you run the ETL, the execution service takes the XML, creates the, um, the Java wrapper around cascading, which calls the Java functions, uh, the cascading functions, and executes on Hadoop. So this is how we achieved an actual ETL-like environment on top of Hadoop using all open source components. This will, be very, this will be clarified in the next slide where we have a quick demo. As you see over here, uh, the look and feel, and this is uh, what Hydrograph actually looks like in action. It looks like any ETL tool. On the left-hand side, you have a component palette. So all the components we just talked to you about uh, are actually exposed in this palette. You drag and drop these components on top of uh, uh, the execution palette, the actual ETL palette, and it creates the ETLs. It also gives you these windows where you can put in the properties for those uh, components. So if you're going to do a, uh, in this case, if you're doing a aggregate, you want to provide the actual field names, the metadata for the, for the aggregate function, all that is actually provided in a, uh, in these, uh, in these windows, and the field names that you put in are saved in the XML tag in the backend. So as you, are, as you see this uh, ETL is being generated, created on the, uh, on the UI, the XML is being saved in the backend. So the XML we talked about, where the business logic resides for the whole ETL function, instead of writing that XML manually, now you're just doing it in a graphical format. The another uh, good part about this is instead of writing the code in a procedural uh, language or even saving it in an XML, now you're not saving this code in a graphical format, so it's easier for someone to read and to understand the code. Um, so the ETL is generated this way. It looks and feels like any ETL. The good part is it actually works all the way down to Hadoop. So in the interest of time, we're just showing you an ETL which is completely created. And once you uh, click the Run button, the ETL is now being executed. It's asking you for the actual connectors to the Hadoop environment and to the Hadoop cluster. And there you could execute. So you have the console, which tells you the results of the execution. Um, William, want to add anything on top of that? Yeah, I just want to add one main uh, design uh, decision is to decouple most of these, what you see. So. Um, you might have seen like, oh, if we have this UI, do I have to use this in production? The answer is no, it's very decoupled. Uh, what Shahab mentioned is the UI just generates XML code, and the XML is a dependency for my uh, code that is compiled to execute, so, um, so go ahead. Yeah. Right, so what that, what that means for us is you don't have a dependency on cascading over here. Uh, you can actually swap out cascading with Spark, and what's what we are, that's what we are doing right now. So in the next couple of months, we'll have the next version of Hydrograph, where all the functions we built in cascading will be now built in Spark. And the same XML code you generated using the developer UI will now be executed on Spark. This gives you some kind of obsolescence proof uh, environment, because if beyond Spark in the future there is some other environment, that is used for the compute, your code that the business logic that resides in the developer, in the UI, in the XML, never changes. So the ETL you write stays the same. You don't have to recode your business logic. We can easily swap out the compute layer be below that by building the same components and pointing the execution service to the next compute fabric, and it will just execute on top of that. So we, uh, cascading generates map reduce, it generates um, Flink and generate stays. Uh, we are swapping all that out for Spark. And uh, it will be compatible to any other niche feature framework that comes up. So in a way, it becomes obsolescence, obsolescence proof. Okay. Right. So I guess that's uh, what uh, Hydrograph is all about. Uh, it will be available as an Apache open source project in the next few months. Um,
and I guess that's about it. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Thank you.